All right, so in understanding the circuitry of the cerebellum, we're going to follow a really simple principle. First of all, we're going to note that, so number one, we're going to note that the signal will enter the circuit. All right, then the signals will be processed. All right, process. Okay, and this process means a sequence that is in order and that requires um, fine tuning. All right, and in this, we also note that the network receives a modest number of inputs to process within several network fibers. And then, so we see that modest comes in, a few comes into, and then it sends, sends out, I'm sorry, modest as in a good amount, and then sends out a limited amount. Um, the fourth thing that we should know is that the arrangement of the neurons within the cerebellum, okay, so neuronal arrangement, um, gives it flexibility for fine tuning. So those are the principles that we're going to base our discussion on. In order for us to appreciate this, we first have to understand a few things about the layers. Uh, so in appreciating the layers, let us just clear our screen so that I can draw a big layer. Okay. So we have three layers, okay? We have, when we look at the wall of the cerebellum, we have three layers. We have the external molecular. So if I have this as, okay, let me delete this so that I put it a little bit up. Okay. We have the, uh -huh. First layer, so this is known as the molecular layer, and then we have the one cell Purkinje's layer, so it's pretty small, so this is the Purkinje layer, and then as we go deeper, we have this internal granular layer. Okay, so three layers. The first one, molecular, Purkinje, and granular. Okay, let's appreciate the cells that are found in each of these layers. And we will start with one known as the Purkinje cell. So the Purkinje cells are one of the biggest uh, neurons within um, these layers. You see that the dendrites, um, themselves extend throughout the molecular layer. Um, so what we have is we have a soma, of course, right in the Purkinje. I'll put it as red because it's so huge. Okay? So you have the soma right in the Purkinje, and then we see dendrites that then go to um, throughout the molecular layer. Okay, so... I can put several. Okay, so these are the dendrites. So what about the axonal end? You see the axonal end passes into the deep nuclei and it synapses. Um, we're taking, a, we, we can just say one of the deep nuclei, because it could be any of the nuclei that we're talking about. So it literally goes down into uh, the granular layer.
and its synapses on this deep nucleus. I'm just going to delete that. This blue deep nucleus. And this deep nucleus is now the one that goes to the motor cortex. So uh, from this, we can say the output of um, cerebellum is the deep nucleus. And the only um, is the deep nucleus. So let's go to deep nucleus. Yeah. This one is the protein um so that's one of them the next one we're going to talk about is the granule cells so the granule cells um uh have their soma in the granule uh layer okay and we see that so this is the granule we observe that they receive input. So before I tell you where it goes, let's see what synapses on this um, particular soma. We see that it receives input from the mossy fibers. Okay, so we can draw some mossy fibers coming in. Okay, so draw so mossy fibers. All right, and the mossy fibers have a stimulatory effect. The other thing that you will note is they have, um, they innovate the Purkinje cells, and how they do this is they send uh, an axon, all right, they send axons to the molecular layers, and these then bifurcate and form a T. These T branches are then the ones that they are running parallel. They are the ones that then can um, uh, affect the Purkinje cells. So how exactly do they do this? Let's just take this up. Okay, so it goes all the way up. And then when it reaches this area, it bifurcates. So it makes a T. So from here, that is when you can see um, stimulation. Okay, you can see stimulation of the Purkinje. I actually didn't tell you what the Purkinje does to the <laughs> uh, to the deep nucleus. Um, it actually inhibits. That's awesome. We'll come back to this. Uh, next to this, we would also want to note that um, we have several other cells within uh, the molecular layer which are inhibitory, um, which I'd like to talk about. Uh, then we'll go to the Golgi. So within the molecular layer, we will not um, cells known as the basket cells. So these basket cells, the inhibitory cells, which are found uh, within um, the mole molecular layer, and they receive input from the parallel uh, fibers. Okay, so they can be stimulated by the parallel fibers. Um, but I said they are inhibitory, so they go and innovate and innovate the Purkinje fibers. Okay. So they go and innovate the Purkinje fibers, and as I said, they are inhibitory. Um, what's the next thing? Uh, there are other called stellates. They are very similar to the basket cells and also found in the molecular, but more superficial. So I won't draw those since they have very similar um, function. Uh, then I'd like to talk about the Golgi cells. The Golgi cells are also found in the granular layer. So the Golgi cells, let's talk a little bit more about them. Okay, so these are the Golgi cells. Um, their dendrites project into the molecular um, layer. So 
they go all the way to the molecular layer and um, you find that they receive input from um, several fibers. First of all, they receive input from the parallel fibers themselves. So you find that the parallel fibers are able to uh, stimulate them. Then they also uh, receive collaterals of incoming mossy fibers. So they can also be um, stimulated by the mossy fibers. Mm. Then we also see that um, they can be affected by uh, Purkinje cells. Uh, the axons themselves uh, project to the dendrites of the granules. So if we have this, you have that happening. All right. Now, are they um, inhibitory or stimulatory? We find that they are actually inhibitory. Okay. Just want to make it a little bit more clear. Okay. So those are the cells that um, we are going to uh, look at here. Then another component that I would like to uh, appreciate is the fact that the deep nucleus is also stimulated by the mossy fibers. Okay, so we find that this can stimulate the mossy fibers. So let's just name these mossy fibers. Now, if we remember what we did on our first diagram. In our previous video, we see that the, the mossy fibers are coming in from the pontine areas, they're also coming from the proprioceptive uh, information carrying fibers. Um, we'll come to the mossy fibers, but at this point, I also want to introduce you to another type of fibers known as. Um, I think uh, let's have something that will be good for the guys. Maybe this one. Ooh, purple. <laughs> Hopefully that would be okay. So we have climbing fibers that come into uh, these layers, and they go all the way up, um, all the way up to the grand, the Perkinje and they stimulate the Purkinje. All right, so we have a stimulation that happens there. But we also see that they stimulate the deep nucleus. Uh, so these are climbing fibers. These specifically come from the um, inferior or library areas. Okay, so now that we have the circuitry intact, Let's now talk physiology. So when we see, when we look at the afferents of the cerebellum, we appreciate the fact that all of them are excitatory. And um, these afferents include two types of afferents. We have the mossy. Okay, I'll go back to my, yeah, okay. So we have the mossy fibers and we have the climbing fibers. So uh, these two are both excitatory, and we note that the climbing fibers are from the inferior or livery area, and they release aspartate. Okay, so they release aspartate, and all the other fibers, all everything else, is coming in uh, through as mossy fibers, and these release glutamate. All right, so we see that both of them have the capacity to spin up on the deep nuclei before they, they go on to the other layers. So if it's the mossy, it goes into the granular uh, layer, um, the granular layer, it synapses on the deep nuclei, but at the same time within the same layer, it's going to synapse on both the granule cells and the Golgi cells. And then 
who we also observe on the climbing fibers that not only does it go to the deep nuclei, but it climbs its way up to the Purkinje cell, hence the name uh, uh, climbing fibers. Uh, so the, the climbing fibers uh, innovate and uh, they release aspartate, activating both the deep nucleus and um, the Purkinje. So if you have to look at just this particular, uh, allow me to use this part. Okay, so if I have to look at just this particular uh, pathway, all right, we have something that stimulates uh, the climbing fibers. Where exactly are they coming from? So from the olivary area. Okay, so from the olivary area, we see that it comes through. It's going to send impulses to the deep nucleus. And once it sends impulses to the deep nucleus, it then will go all the way up and stimulate um, the Purkinje cell. And once it stimulates the Purkinje cell, the Purkinje cell is going to be activated and it will in, in turn inhibit uh, the deep nucleus. Now, if we're looking at this partial innovation of the deep nucleus by the climbing fiber, as well as the Purkinje, we're going to see that first of all, you're going to have uh, the first, okay, let's say 100% uh, impulse action potential through to the deep nuclei. And the deep nuclei is supposed to take this 100% to the motor cortex, okay? But before it could take this 100% to the motor cortex, the climbing fibers are also going to uh, stimulate uh, the Purkinje cells. So through the Purkinje cell, we see that this 100% is not really going to be 100% is going to be diluted. Why? Because we're having the effect of the Purkinje, which is supposed to be inhibitory. So it will inhibit part of what is supposed to leave the deep nucleus. And by the end of the day, you won't really have 100% going through. You might have maybe 80%, 70% of the initial um, action potentials that were being brought through uh, the climbing um, fibers. So that in itself is one of the simplest of, of these uh, uh, pathways that we can talk about. So in short, what I'm saying is that this pathway works by uh, the climbing fibers come in, they are innovating the deep nuclear and this deep, deep nuclear is supposed to then take the message to the motor cortex. But in as much as it is giving this to the deep nuclear, you see that there is also a stimulation of an inhibitor. So the Purkinje is now inhibiting part of the uh, deep nuclear message that is supposed to go to the cortex. All right, awesome. Um, The other thing that I would like you to note is that the Purkinje's are the basic, all right. That's a very thing, good, good thing to note. What about the multi fibers? So the multi fibers have uh, three kinds of synapses. So um, the multi fibers, the first of all, directly uh, get their stimulation onto the deep nuclei, and that we want. But we see that, secondly, they innovate the granular uh, layer, okay, or the granule cells themselves. So they're going to uh, stimulate the granule cells, and these granule cells, once they're stimulated, let's call a specific pathway, so I'll put this pathway in um, pink. All right, so one of the pathways is that they go directly to, they go directly uh, to the deep nucleus. But the second one that I'm interested in talking about is the fact that they're able to, first of all, go to the granule, and they're going to stimulate it. Once this granule cell is stimulated, it is going to 
stimulate the the Purkinje cell. Okay, so it will go all the way, and then it will stimulate the Purkinje cell. Once the Purkinje cell is stimulated, then it is going to inhibit the deep nuclei. So that is one of the pathways. Um, so in this case, we have uh, let's say 100% comes in from the mossy fibers to the deep nuclei, but that's not the only thing it does. Okay, it also activates the granule cells, and the granule cells then activate the Purkinje, and then the Purkinje are the ones that come and sort of dilute or stimulate this 100%. So unlike the climbing fibers where it was very exact, it was just stimulate, stimulate the deep nuclei and then stimulate the inhibitor, okay? Then the inhibitor, once activated, is going to inhibit part of the final output. In this case, we actually have the granule cells as a go-between. Go um, the mossy fibers are going to stimulate the granules then the granules will stimulate the Purkinje. The Purkinje will then be able to um, inhibit uh, part of what is going on in the deep nuclei before the final output. So that is just one of them. Uh, the second pathway that we can see here is um, what is happening through the Gorgi. Okay, so what is happening through the Gorgi is that the mossy fibers will also go and stimulate the Gorgi. So once the, the Gorgi are stimulated, I want you to see the two things that are happening. So it has stimulated the Gorgi and also stimulated the granules. The granules have the one job. They are supposed to go and stimulate the inhibitor so that what goes out at the end of the day is not the 100%, but what is going out is a diluted percentage because we have inhibition coming in from the Purkinje cells. But what do the gorges do? Once the gorges are stimulated, they are going to inhibit the granule. Okay? So if 100% is going there, and then another 100% of the stimulation from the mossy is going here, all right? The amount of message that is going to reach the Purkinje will be diluted, okay? It won't be 100% go and finish everything that was brought in. No, no, no. Why? Because we have the Gorgi cells being stimulated. And once these are stimulated, we're going to have them inhibit, all right? So once they inhibit, you see that the final action potentials going through there are actually spatially reduced. And once there's that spatial reduction, then you will find that whatever inhibition will come in here will not be as strong. It will be limited. What am I saying? Somebody out there just got confused. So we have the gorges. We have the Gorgi cells, and we have the granule cells, and then we have the Purkinje, then these deep nuclei. The role of the granules is to make sure that these guys get stimulated. Once the Purkinje gets stimulated, they are going to inhibit, all right, so that what goes out is dilute. All right. Why is it dilute? Because this guy has already been uh, stimulated by the mossy fibers. So all we want to do is sort of dilute what the final output of the mossy fibers is. So how are we going to dilute this? The mossy fibers are also going to excite the granule cells. And the granule cells are going to excite the Purkinje. The Purkinje are the ones who are doing the dilutions. But then the system works in such a way that it's going to ensure that the dilution that is going on due to the activity of the granule, okay, is limited. 
So what does it do? The mossy fibers also ensure that the Goji cells are stimulated. And their role is to inhibit. All right? So they will inhibit the granule cells. Though the granule cells will be sending action potentials to the protein you will see that there's an amount of inhibition that is going on. Negative feedback, I guess. <laughs> so once the protein are stimulated, it won't be as much this time because the Golgi cells are now coming into play. I always give an example to my students for them to understand of certain relationships that we have where um, your role is to, to say something, but um, you go and tell someone to say something, and then because they're a big mouth, you also go and tell another person, okay? So you telling another person, instead of friend A, Mary, Instead of Mary taking the news as it should be to pretend a hundred percent, you've also gone to tell George. What does George do? George, George goes to Mary and starts telling her mm, what our friends told us and what, what is what is it doing? He he is inhibiting, he is reducing Mary's capacity to go and tell Perkinje what Perkinje should do. Because when Mary goes now She's going with all the negativity that George put in her head, and the final thing that she's going to say to Perkinje will be reduced. So when Perkinje is talking to deep nucleus, reduce, reduce effect. So that's the fine tuning that we're talking about. There's one more that I want you guys to um, try to write down on your own. Uh, one more pathway is what the granule does to itself. If you've noticed, the mossy fibers are going to stimulate the granule. And the granules are going to stimulate the person who is inhibiting. Have you seen this? Yeah, it goes up. And what does it do? Stimulate. And it's stimulating the person who is inhibiting. And I also give that as an example. Sometimes the things that we tell people are there to come back to us and affect us negatively. You think you're stimulating this person and that person is just, you know, getting data so that at the end of the day they come and demotivate you. Uh, but in any case, I would like you to um, see how this will affect mainly the output of the uh, parking day. So uh, for now... That is what we're just going to uh, dwell on. This is a lot to digest. I suggest you watch this over and over to just understand the circuitry that occurs in um, the cerebellum. But uh, note that the output um, is through the Purkinje to the deep nucleus. And the, the Purkinje's role is to inhibit the deep nucleus. And the inhibition, if you can see, is really stronger through the, cli uh, the, the climbing fibers because it's a, it's a more of a direct pathway compared to the mossy fibers. Mossy fibers have to talk to this one, who talks to that one, who then comes to inhibit. So there's a lot going on on the mossy side of things. Um, the nuclei, the deep nuclei, you should also keep in mind that they receive direct innovation, direct excitation, direct stimulation uh, from the, both the mossy and the climbing fibers. And that is the excitation or the stimulation that the Purkinje sort of dilutes or sort of um, inhibits partially. Uh, I think for now, we'll leave it at that in the next. Uh, video will we'll put everything together and uh, just see how the cerebellum is working. <laughs>